Hey guys, welcome and what's up? Um, super excited. This is Coach's Corner episode number five. So thank you for tuning in and hanging out with us. Um, today, I am I have no long introduction because the amazing, great, phenomenal, world famous <laughs> Tammy Biggs is on chatting with us and talking all kinds of gymnastic stuff. So I know she's been a huge influence um, in my life and my gymnastics, and I think she's pretty much coached just about every uh, coach and kid in the country. She, if, if, you, <laughs> if you don't know, she was uh, part of national teams starting in 86 and coached Missy Marlowe in the Olympics in 1988 and has been on national team and national staff ever since. Um, she is an FIG Brevet judge and coach. Um, and coaches and does clinics all over the country. So I'm super excited. Hang out with us and make sure you're asking your questions for her as we go. Uh, all right, we'll see you back in a second. All right, Tammy, you're on with us. How's it going? Hello, everybody. Hello. Great, great, great. It's awesome to have you. Yeah, we've been. It's great to be here. It's great to talk to everybody. It's awesome. So, yeah, we got a chance to talk earlier about some information that you had shared with us. And so I think you wanted we were going to talk about our uh, the PowerPoint that you had uh, put together for everybody. Yeah, we uh, at the last developmental camp, we started with the mental training. And so then this PowerPoint I just did about a week ago with the developmental team and the coaches. So I wanted to share that because if you uh, there's a lot of other videos you can pull off my website, but mainly breaking down now the mental part for you as you go along is very important. So I think uh, you had given the kids the first introduction of some of the skills, yeah. okay? Yep. And after they write down on that, then I'm going to send more papers that then they progress to the next thing. And at the end of the PowerPoint on this, it'll show uh, some of the kids are, that are training at home how they say the words and then do the skill so you can understand how that mental part works. So the first part of the PowerPoint is just some drills you can do at home, and one of the biggest part is addressing the feet. And I go over all these angles and body alignment and everything you could fix. But uh, bottom line on beam and floor, you have to have high releve work. So uh, in this, uh, I use uh, Malia from Aftershock. And it shows how you can uh, increase the toe point and the high releve work using a chair and a panel mat. Yeah, this is And great. then you move it to the then you move it to the wall because you've got to have that high range of motion in your feet, whether you do it two foot, one foot, and in plie and straight. So you need all those versions of it while you while you can work it because it is. We used to do a lot of this, and some of you have been at tops. We used to do a lot of this, but now it's it's hugely important because we never get time to work it as much as we can. Yeah. So you, do, you should do it two foot, one foot. With a chair and a panel mat, then you can do it up against the wall, which if you scroll on down. Yep. I like all she'll, this plie stuff have it. that and, she was doing too, this um, working in the yes. plie passe position and coupe. Yeah, so trying to get that high releve work, and I'm working on some other ones to put up also uh, moving on into turn shapes. But the body alignment against the wall is very important. So you can do all the two foot, one foot. The releve, so you can use the help of a chair, a chair against the wall, or just against the wall without anything, and then it moves to a line or to a laser beam or whatever you have at home so that you can try to work the body alignment. Then it turns into a beam complex so that she will be end up showing the plie and the releve and showing it against the wall, then she'll move it across the beam. But if you can increase your high releve work with good body alignment, it's going to help to take off of all your leaps and turns and everything. So, yeah, most people have at least a wall that they can yeah. use. 
And if you use beam feet, that helps. And make sure that you work it uh, parallel for the tumbling and anywhere from parallel uh, to a little turnout, whatever your hips. Do not over turnout because uh, our country doesn't have as much turnout. And so you don't want to hurt the hips. Just turn out for your degree of hips. Okay? okay. So then she moves to a beam to do it on the beam. And so she'll go across, and you can do a one pass, two passes. As you get through and do all the complexes, okay, there's handstand walking, there's blocking on your hands, there's one arm skills, there's a ton of stuff you can do. And if you increase it while you're at home and you don't even have a low beam, you can do it on a carpeted area or you can do it on the tile. But then if you make the complexes where they last, a minute and a half for endurance for our beam routine. Okay, so uh, while you're doing any of the conditioning or any of the stuff we give you, if you can start to do it and try to go for a minute and a half, that covers your beam routine when you get back in the gym. Yeah. Okay, so that, and you go forward, back, side on everything. So this is just showing some of the feet work, trying to get as high releve as possible. Your hands can go on your hips. Then they go over your head. In a minute, you'll see she has tubing for the ankles and puts them on the arms and presses them back. Now, this stand-up drill is hugely important. Yeah. And you can do it on the floor or whatever. But the idea is to stand up and sit down without crashing onto your bottom and to keep the toes pressing down. If you play the piano with your toes, that means you're going to take the weight off the toes. So they want to be pressing down the whole time. And if you have a band, you can put it on your arms. And then you can even put your leg in between the band when it's on your arms. Yeah, I know we've tried that at the gym as as kind of a challenge that you gave us. Yeah. Getting one of those little orange, you know, the, the Tammy bands. And, right. Uh, like a, yeah. It's a, like 10 inches, I think, right? Like a 10 inch band. And it goes around your yeah. wrist and then you try and put it in that ankle as well. That one's really tough. Yeah, because how you stand up and straighten and how fast you straighten for the stand up sit down is all your walkovers backwards and forwards and it goes into the front aerial. So if you can't stand up very quickly, you need to work on that and press the knees out over the toes because that has a direct correlation to all your tumbling on beam. And I, I think we've talked about this before too, this idea of um, where she's sitting down and standing up, keeping her weight over her feet. Um, yes, it's exactly. All your, it's your landing, it's your ankle strength too, right? Because it's... Exactly. Yes. And if you've ever hurt your ankle, you have to relearn how to do this because it, you've got to push those knees out over the toes and keep pressing on the toes the whole yeah. time. That it becomes almost prehab work for ankle injury kids that you need to exactly. make sure you're doing exactly. this a lot. All right, the walking across the beam stuff, now going forward, sideward, and backward, I think, right? Yeah, and this you should do it for uh, nice and smooth. She goes and she walks fast. I just showed the fast one. I really like it best when you do it and hold for a count of five on your feet. But at least if you can work on high releve at this point. Yeah. And then if some of you were in tops before, we used to walk along the beam and hold the heel forward for the high forced arch. And so that's where you'll get into where you hold uh, with the hips totally square. The leg is very low in arabesque and it'll go arabesque side by side forward. And when you hit the side by side, you'll watch it right here. So she's going to be pressing on her toes and holds it a low arabesque. And the side-by-side -side right there is where the switches and all the leaps come through. So if you're not strong in a high releve with that coming through, that's where we like to cheat our leaps. So you can really simulate this by going very square and tight. And you hold it in the back for five, side-by-side -side for five, and forward for five. And you do it forward and backward. And then after you hold it for five, then you do it very crisp for one count. So it would go arabesque, side by side, forward, step, arabesque. So the holding and then the stepping. So if even if you do half passes, okay, it's beneficial. I like full passes myself. But you have to judge how much time you have in a beam complex. Yeah. So as we break it down in this thing, you can pick many things and try to touch a little bit of each one. Well, and I'm looking at, okay. at, at this, too, because I know 
um, since everybody's at home, the equipment is different from kid to kid to kid to gym to house to what they exactly. have. Exactly. But something like this could even, we could do it on a, a stair step or a curb outside, like any space they have. Exactly. It doesn't take a lot of space. Exactly. And it, it doesn't make, you can just stand and balance for a count of five with the leg and back and then side by side. Yeah. So you can simulate it by having a curb or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could do this on my stair step at home. Uh, okay, this is exactly. with, this is with exactly. the banding, right? Yes, and pressing back. Usually I don't have it hanging, but trying to control the arms where she can balance without wiggling them. Yeah. Because the open chest, shoulders down, and in the back. And I see that side by side. Because we, we have a tendency if our if we're struggling with our switch leaps to kind of throw that hip flexor way out to the side right like that way out the to the side and it goes through this shape yes it goes through that shape of pointing the foot side by side so that's huge and then once you get that you can do leg swings put the foot side by side get in high releve and swing it it's called a bump my cloche and dance but you swing and swing and swing and swing and so if you can get that hip rise you'll start to get it in your leaps but if you don't have that push through the feet then it's it's kind of a problem yeah. So um, you can develop that. And, these are and then this is what we talked about. And one and one and one and step and sharp and sharp and sharp and step. And make sure you do it forward and, and backward. And, you know, you touched on something that I know we've been talking a lot in our Zoom workouts, too. It's got to be quality over quantity right yes and, and most self, definitely self um mario who talked with us on wednesday is about sports psychology was kind of we were talking about self accountability and this yes. kind of stuff um is so important to really focus i mean they're so small but you have to focus on the quality of the movement not just w rushing through you can rush through this and it can do nothing for you Exactly. That's why when she walked the first time, I showed the walks, but they're not the control walks I really like. I like where they have to hold. Yeah. And then you know you have to go for a minute and a half on each apparatus, about a minute and a half for your routine. So if you can't maintain working high releves or walks or anything with a minute and a half, you're going to have trouble making it through your routine with strong arms and strong feet. Yeah. Yeah. So the I know that's what I mean, we were just about in that phase of our training at the gym was that consistency for long periods, adding that cardio before state right. region, before championship season is you got to be adding that time. But I guess if you're adding it all the time and making sure you're up at at least a minute and a half of work before your rest phase, right. you're doing better for yourself, even with these little small complexes. Yeah, because it's like a, someone in a ballet class. If you do resistance in the plie and you're engaging the whole body, you'll start to sweat. And that's what you yeah. want. That's what you want. It's um, isometric contractions, right? It's just Exactly, exactly. Point. Okay. And this is uh, using tubing or, or not. Yeah. So, yeah, if you don't have tubing, you can do it without. Because what you want to do is passe, keep the foot on the line and your foot right over your head. And you have to pull it to stretch it. Then you have to hold it. And then you kick it up and down yep. and try to curl the hip and keep the bottom leg tight. Now, if you can move your bottom foot up next to a wall and get in high releve, it, it will work you standing on your foot. Okay. Yeah. So one of the PowerPoints I have on the website, I show that using the wall with the ball of the foot down there. And so that yeah. way. And, and then, so this is in our warm up for the developmental team. And so they, we when you're using it with your foot kind of in that four starch high releve against the wall, are you still yes, having exactly. them use the, you're still having them use the resistance as well? So they've got gravity yes. plus the mm -hmm. tubing resistance? Yes, because uh, they it's hard enough for them to keep it on the line. But if you do the ball of the foot against the wall, that gives them a standing base. Yeah. So I, I get them back up against the wall. So, yeah. And then the tubing helps them because you've got to make sure you have flex and then you have active flex. Yeah. And then the holding of it, 
you'll you'll have it to where you can shape your leg anywhere from parallel to turnout. But remember, don't do too much turnout because we've had kids on team do too much turnout when they think it's dance and it hurts their hip flexor. So it's right. all in the degree of turnout they have. And then you one, can use sliders and tubing when you do the side one. One thing that um, it was in one of our first episodes, I had uh, my friend and coach Dylan Taylor on, and we were talking about how there's acro gymnastics that's almost all just handstand holding. Like they, they spend all of their time in the gym training just acro holding. And I feel like, I mean, that turnout is developed over years and years and years of dance training. And we exactly. don't have exactly. years and years and years to train. So it's important that we're not trying to just go out and look like dancers and then end up right. putting our, our, ourselves exactly. in the process. Exactly. Yeah, now, that's true. While we're on this one, I had a question for you because I know it's up and down. I know you've explained it um, in some really good kind of thought processes and terminology. You've got tubing, which has a certain level of resistance, um, like a resistance arc. Right. It starts very easy and gets very hard the yeah. more you uh -huh. stretch it. And you've got ankle weights. When would we use one over the other? Um, like what are some pros and cons or benefits of using one versus the other or what time? Well, uh, when, once you get your range of motion to where you have pretty much your three splits on both sides, mm -hmm. then as you do it, you can start to use the sliders to make them faster where they are driving faster when in the straddle on their belly. And then you can start to use the tubing. And basically the weights are to coordinate the timing of the arms and legs. Yeah. Because we have a tendency that our arms are twice as slow as our legs. So using the weights on the arms is not heavy weights. It's just like we start with the tubing, holding the tubing. Then yeah. if they can, they can hold weights in their hands or they can put the weights on their wrist but it's mainly trying to strengthen the arms so that they have a shape with the arms uh, most of the time you can't most of the judges come up to me and they go we had to deduct because we couldn't even tell where their arms were it's yeah. not a right or wrong but it has to complement the legs so especially when you're working leap combinations the arms have to be ready to drive in the lift and then pull and place and the weights help you do that so you because we have tendency I to drop them and I know you tend to, especially at camps and at developmental and all these, the weights tend to be used more for the arms to get the shoulders in line yes. moving faster. I know a lot of, you know, part of our warm up, we'll put the ankle weights on the ankles for some ballistic kicking to start to add some resistance yes. as well. But typically the banding is a little bit better to use. The tubing and the banding is better to use on the legs because of the, the way the resistance affects your leg, right? Exactly, because you'll get the full range of motion. Yeah. And so here about a year and a half ago, we lost all our flex, and we got it back by doing all this tubing. All the tubing. And so uh, when I used to have uh, elite kids way back, I would ask them to, to not leap the most flexible kids, just let them do tubing. Yeah. And yet they would leap them, and then they'd limp the championships. It's more beneficial doing the tubing with the leg kicks to get them conditioned to leap. If right. you leap just because you're going to leap, your legs may not be in condition and you could have a hamstring pull or a hip flexor pull. So you want to make sure that they're, the tubing helps them get it warmed up and get it to where it's in the range of motion. Yeah. I think um, it was shift. Have you, have you worked with them, Dave Tilly and uh, shift movement or something like that? He had explained it at one of uh, like a physical therapy lecture about the, the further away you're ankle and your weight is to the center of your body, the more you're creating this kind of really aggressive uh, pendulum that swings back and forth. And you can tear that um, hip flexor muscle really easy if you're not warmed up, conditioned for it and have the range of motion for it yes. too, right? Yeah, it's, it's important to be, and, and then to do active flex across, like rolling in the splits, yeah. stuff like that that's active to where they're working and their natural hip turnout. Yeah. So that's important. And then you'll see in one of the others where now she's going to use the tubing with the chair so that she doesn't get into her lower back so much to kick the back kicks. So she'll step back and kick and step back and to do the ring shape to where the ring is split very late over the head and it goes to the upper back, not the lower back. So she should be kicking here in a minute.
So she's trying to activate her head a little bit and then her yeah. shoulders a little bit, but not her back. So that's why we have it on the chair because it shouldn't be in the back. It should be in the upper body. In the shoulder, like between yeah, the, upper, the, the leg range of motion and then the upper shoulders should be the yes. other part of the ring. And we just had a uh, PowerPoint with Cheryl Hamilton and Tom and I uh, last Wednesday about doing um, how long it took SUNY to get her beautiful switch ring. And yeah. so when it showed it from 2016 to 2019, you'll see where her arms and, and shoulders are coordinating with the ring, which made it a hundred times better. Okay. I was, I was gonna ask you too, because you mentioned Cheryl Hamilton, but in terms of the deductions we get as a as a country and the ones you see the most, it's almost all uh, our leaps, right? The yes, it's all the leaps. Where we, we lose. We practically get we get all our tumbling and practically get none of our leaps. Right. So this is a perfect time to spend time on their leg kicks and their leaps and jumps and hops and work the the coordination of a cross between plie jump and punching, right. so that they find what is best for them. And in JO, I know you've explained this to me and and to some of our kids before, but it's so important to think about one how you're training it, but two how you're composing it because in JO you get two of right. a skill. In FIG you only get one of a skill. One. So yes. if you so the if you do a switch and then a switch ring, but the ring doesn't qualify because you didn't take the time to work this stuff, then it's a zero yes. with just deductions, right? And that's what happened to us at Worlds because SUNY always puts it at the end. Everybody's been told, put the switch ring at the end if you want to put it in because if you don't get it, you don't want to take away a switch, switch half. Right. So if it, uh, rule of thumb is the switch ring usually goes at the end. And in the floor pass, when you do a long pass, you don't want to do a switch and a, another switch. It's better to do a switch and then a tergite because if it devalues, then for elite, you lose a half a point for doing the same leap twice. Yeah. So and you and you lose the the jump series. I would assume that's yes, a half that's a, point a half a point. Yeah. Series. Yeah. Um, I would guess that's the same rule in Jo though too. If you if you've got a switch and a switch half and it doesn't get credit, then you don't have a jump series in Jo either. So you're losing. Right, half. but you, one thing with good with Jo, you can repeat the skills. So that's yeah. nice. Oh, that's true. You get you get. Yeah. It anyway, so right that's there. nice. We just can't do it. Now, this one is oh, uh, like this a drill one. we've done forever and kicking and going up against the wall. Now, she's only going to do it forward, but you can do this at home. So that if you can releve as you kick, that means you can take off your foot. So whatever level the kid is, if they can't get the bottom foot in high releve and more parallel, that, that means usually they're not getting off the foot for a split leap or switch leap or whatever leap it is. Yeah. And then you do also those sideways. But it, that gets a, the body alignment straight up and makes them learn how to go straight up and curl the hip of the leg that's up. So the foot should be way over the head. So one thing that um, that we were talking about, my, my kids, I just put it on my Instagram this week, was um, uh, Mia's flexibility test. Uh, cause I remember, yeah, I don't know if uh -huh. you've, if beautiful. You've, yeah, I mean, that's still to me the standard after Nastia of what flexibility is supposed to look yes, like. Yes, exactly. And, exactly. Um, and it, it, it's got flaws too. I mean, we're, we're always trying to make it a little bit better, but the way she curls her hip is, is a lot of this drill and a lot of the tubing drill, but she activates the glute, like the back of your hip and butt more than I've seen anybody. It, usually we pull from the front and you only have so much range of motion that way. Yeah, and then it keeps your hamstring safe. Yeah. You can't have it safe if you're piking and choking your hip back. It has to be going freely to develop the back of your hamstring, the upper part of the hamstring, so. And let's see, these are kicks on, on every direction. Now she's just doing kicks across. So again, one whole pass kicking forward one hole pass side, one hole pass back yeah. is very important. Then you can do combination like the leak compulsory, but it has to kick. Now the tubing is just so they kick and try to do that curl. Yeah. So they okay, keep their, so she's the goal is now to keep she, the tubing behind your behind, behind your yes. Tail. If you notice, she moves it a little bit when she kicks mm -hmm. and she does it backwards. So she needs to have weights on her arms also to try to keep the arms pressing back. 
and that's where we lose it on our switch rings because as you kick they're supposed to be back behind you and the sternum is supposed to be up so yeah. you have to have work for that body alignment um, and in terms of the elite compulsory, you've got deductions for posture on all of those kicks too, right? Yes, you have dynamics, over, how quick and aggressive they are, high releve and shoulders down, body alignment. It, it, the hardest part is the kicks across the beam. Yeah. So you can improve those phenomenal while you're off and only have in the house. Now, this is what we do. She stands up, she does three kicks. One is flat-footed. And she kicks as high as she can. The next would be kick and releve. Then you, she kicks and jumps. And those are the lead ups for the leaps. Okay? Yeah. And so, again, she needs to press those arms back more. And then this one hops. Yes. So then she, she'll take a hop. And we do it on both sides. Yes. One would both be a leap sides. and one it's would be the important. switch. And just staying yes. balanced and not automatically creating more imbalances right and that kick was much better yeah. and the thing is she should go straight up to do the kick and then it should keep kicking as you push off so then we do the leaps from the yep. knee one from the knee and climb so that's later on in the next uh, say, video the next one um, yeah i was going to and add... then leg swing for the switch half and okay. the turgite half because this is so the... she does these pretty good so this is a switch half leg swing. If it moves, I don't know. And it's supposed to fly on the second side. So it gets so higher. It kicks, you got more amplitude on so the second side. So it gets higher. Yep. Then she goes and mountain climbs and kicks and kicks. And so it should always go higher. And as the leg drops, it drops like a front pike open and her head snaps. Yep. So you can work a lot of detail work with all the kicks in the arms. Let's play that one As more time. I like that one. Um, I remember this was like three different rotations for us at, at developmental camps was always dance and with you on beam and then we had beam dance and we were just, this was our, as if you can leap, but, you're very valuable on beam because that's you've got a lot of difficulty. Yes, and floor. Time. And right now, like we said with Cheryl Hamilton, the the kid that won on beam and floor at worlds um they got a bunch of turns and a bunch of leaps mm -hmm. so but as a country we don't get it because we don't spend the time on them enough so now we can spend time on right them. and it's it's pretty impact free as long as you're making sure you take your time to warm up and and do the banding and the drills and basics first you don't want to just go right into leaping the same way you wouldn't throw your, no uh -uh. your floor no. passes right away and this is for the turgite, so if it runs smooth, I don't know. It kicks up and crosses and swings. And how fast the hips turn. And again, you train both ways because if not, then you might miss out on a connection that you might could do. Yeah. And uh, level 10 is very forgiving with this. So level 10 and elites, they, they can do a lot of nice uh, split leap combinations with front aerials, with uh, side aerials, and then the then they can do the turgite half. So it's huge. And the turgite is the only one left in elite that's an E or a D. Yeah. So the turgite half is very important. And that's the turgite half is the E on beam, right? And the yeah. turgite mm -hmm. and if, is And a if D. it's short, yeah. And if it's short, it gets a yeah. D. So it's kind of a win-win. You get an E or a D. And, and J-O, switch half and turgite are both E's, right? So you're two yes, tenths. Yes, exactly. You're two tenths out of your nine five already. Just, yes. just putting that yes. in. So in J.O., you can really basically leap if you do that best or tumble if you do that yeah. best. And it, it's really beneficial for the, the J.O. kids. Yeah. Extremely. Um, okay. And Should we keep moving on this, the motor, motor skills? Yeah, we have motor skills. We just showed her doing a walt step without arms and with arms. Okay. And you should do chassés. And normally, when they start the motor skills, what happens is I do the knees up, the the kick the bottom, the deer runs, everything, the one leg hops, all of the warm up that we run, I do it on beam as a warm up. So they could be doing that as a warm up with their knees up high and chassés forward, back and side. But 
but we need motor skills to travel down the right. beam instead of looking static. I was going to say, because you're going to get artistry dings if even if you've got the leaps and you can't move on the beam without looking awkward, it's it's going to be hard to get yeah get a uh, score. I noticed yeah. one thing too, and I was just going to point it out in um, on all these videos, how easy it is. I mean, Malia's got a just a tape line on her panel map where you know yeah she's got a tape on the line might yeah. not have a balance beam at home but everybody's got to roll a tape that you can go to the hardware store and get and you can work all these motor skills equal if not this i mean almost the same just with a straight and, line and the thing is the motor skills you can build up your endurance for the minute 30 yeah. until you can get the tumbling in there and so this is this one's so, with arms yes She's waving her arms to try to coordinate and stretch yeah. up. And then forward, back, and side. And the same requirement is for J.O. They should be moving forward, back, and side. Yeah. So you have some of the same deductions in Elite as you do in the 10s. Yeah. So. yeah, and some of the, the 10 deductions have gotten harder over the last couple of years. They yes. started getting a lot more picky. Yes. Well, they have uh, in J.O. you have one tenth for standing one one thousand and two tenths for standing we have one tenth but then we have a, an artistry deduction for not moving the arms and feet yeah. so basically both jo and elite have huge for standing so even if they could just do dancing into a back walkover dancing into a single back handspring or front handspring so that there's not stopping standing yeah. and posing yeah the more you can move and it, it's it's all optional gymnastics. You just have to be able to cover it and and creatively move, right? They're not going to know if you add it exactly. or not. Um, I do know because we work on this all the time. Your your arm movement and your leg movement have to be in sync together. You can't just do a exactly a something with your hand and be wiggling your feet back and forth and trying to you know take those yeah. two or three nervous steps. Yeah, that's uh, very important. Okay, jumps. So now she does a few jumps because somewhere between a plie jump and a punch is what they they uh, have to figure out. Because sometimes when they say dance for jumps, they plie too much. Yeah. It you've got to explode out of your legs. So now she's then she'll start to punch and then she'll figure out which one is a punching yeah. one. So the quicker the and then on one of the other uh, PowerPoints I have, it's really a eye movie. Uh, I show a lot of knee extensions sitting in the chair with tubing and sliders and stuff like yeah. that to develop the quickness out of the legs. One thing that you could even put you did when when you were at our gym was um, sitting on the slider. You know, one of the big sliders or on a. I mean, you could use yes. anything, right? And sitting against the wall and then pushing your feet to get the... Pushing off, yeah, exactly. Getting that active. How fast you make an Achilles. Yep. Now, this is Lily because she gets to be in the gym, but she's trying to work a straddle shape. So when you get back to the gym, if you kick and curl because the hip has to curl and kick and curl, and then she does a seat drop. Okay, so she goes straddle seat drop. And I don't know why it's chopping up so much, but uh, I, that is one of the best ones. So see how she curls her hip? Yeah. Because it's so hard to do it on the floor. You can go off a panel mat, and that's what she's going to do next. So she'll always do the kick, kick, and try to curl because it should go all the way up into her belly button like a zipper. Belly button and curl the hip. Because our nobody is supposed to, there is a straddle sideways and a pike. And the pike is too choky. Uh -huh. So you want to find that turnout where it fits her again. And Lily's one of the ones that uh, uh, about three years ago, I think it was, that she would turn out too much and had a problem with and had to go through rehab with her hip flexor. And now she understands parallel and her turnout, which is very nice. She's a very smart kid. Very yeah. Uh, and uh, okay. I assume the making sure that we're focused on curling our hips under us are is it's going to keep us healthier. Yes, yeah. most definitely. Otherwise, it affects the hip flexor. Yeah. Okay. So different and that affects vaulting. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because once so. you've one, it's not a short injury. Anybody that's no. dealt with a hip flexor or hamstring issue, it's, it lasts for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. At least five six months out, just trying to rehab that. Yeah, that's for sure. 
So okay. she's going to do, uh, I think we just did some tuck jumps, but you should be doing a uh, split jump, tuck jump, pike jump, and see the full extension of her, her toes. Yeah. It should be totally full extension of the feet and shaping at the top. So you kind of have to do little V-ups in the tuck and V-ups in a pike and V-ups in a wolf. So you get fast with it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I know on one of my other ones I show uh, with a band on their arms and legs speeding up the V up. Yeah. And the new JO compulsories, uh, there's some sort of V up on the beam. And I know I was at Cheryl Jarrett's gym in Austin and I found that the V ups in our country were very slow. And so Cheryl said, I said, I found this in the gym and I used your kid for my Congress lecture. And she said she went back to the gym and she couldn't find one kid that could do the V up and the new compulsories to hold. So people need to be aware that they need to do a lot of um, V ups of v. and tucks and pikes. And yes, yep. exactly. And um, using the bands on our the wrist and the ankle to help speed it up, I guess, get more ballistic in that. Use yes, it as some ballistic, assistant, yeah. assistance. Exactly. And then she does straight leg punches forward and backward just for all the tumbling. So she should be staying on toe and punching, but right. it looks like she's gliding. <laughs> well, and I was watching all these other jumps that she was doing and just going back to, this was the one before with just the tuck jumps, but attention to detail and making sure that you get all the way working through your feet, that it's not, yes, just, it's an, usually... it's not just an ankle jump. It's an ankle push through the ball of your foot and then curl the toes exactly. really fast. And you could put tubing under a beam, a low beam like this, and grab hold of it and yeah. work the jumping, you know? So you get and some that, that would help too. Resistance. Yes. All right, we went to that one. So some ring. Now this is part of this is Paloma talking about um, her skills. So she says the words of the mental part and then she does the ring. Yeah. And that one's a little choppy. I the video, I don't know why it's not working. I, but um, I think it's it's actually she, smooth for us. It's probably just the way we are sharing screens oh, okay. right now. Yeah, I think it's I think it's playing smooth. You guys can comment and let me know. Because she has a really pretty ring. There yeah, it is. That's it. Yes. And so she says the words, and then she does the skill, and she'll do a leap the same way. And so the words, when you break it down, should complement the skill. Yeah. So that and so you can freeze frame them and and pick it out but uh yeah she has a beautiful ring jump a beautiful anodi and also uh let me her switch jump over just while we're here because this is something that i had shared with with our kids that you had shared with me it was part of their assignments yes was this thing and what you mean by their words right so you okay it's it, it's very important that um when you're teaching something that's usually when it's the best time, and that's how I coach tops in the beginning levels. I emphasize on a word at the beginning, how to take off, in the middle, how to shape, and at the end. And if they have one key word that could mean two or three things, but one key word, it makes the coach and the athlete be on the same page. Right. So after they fill this out, what happens is then they send me the words and then a picture that they had from one last meet. And then I break it down and show them where – you can change the word to make the skill happen. So but the first part is fill this out, and then you can text it to me or to your coach or whatever. And then after that, then I send you another. And every skill has beginning, middle, end. Yeah. So you have to remember that the single skills and the flight, like if you went back handspring, back handspring, the back handspring has a jump phase, a push on the hands, and a square phase. And then the next skill, another back handspring, has a jump, a push, a snap. So you have to figure out the words. So then after you get this, I send another paper out and then it starts to talk about um, the transitions in and out till you have all four events that you have all the mental uh, things down. So that way you and your coach are on the same page. Yeah. And like it's not taking the place of a sports psychologist because it's how a coach gets the kids to do something. For example, at the last international and developmental camp, 36 kids came in, and in the side aerial, nobody was snapping their head. The head snap added to it. Every one of them got the aerial better. Yeah. So it's very important to, to know 
and and know what they think and so after we did the developmental camp one kid went out and uh, stuck her beam for the first time so it definitely has a correlation and then that way when you go to any camps another coach could give you an idea and you could go wow that helped me so you never erase you only keep writing and then you rewrite it and rewrite it till you have the whole bar routine beam routine floor routine and vault and okay and i just wanted to and ask a question with with this right now because it's something that we talk about i know that if you're not used to doing these beginning middle and end assignments it's it's easy to say uh kind of the corrections that you get straight legs point my feet those aren't the words we want to be using or even like no, uh -uh. reach back for a back handspring you you want to have if you can't say the it active. right yeah. it's an action word right and if you can't say it quickly then it's probably you're not writing a paragraph yes well i'll give you a good example because chelsea memo was one of our best popa kids on beam yeah. by the end of three days at camp i would have to speed up her arms to get the timing correct on a fresh day she could do the words yeah on a slower day you have to then make the arms go faster to match the feet because the arms are the first thing to go. So if you do this, then when I send another piece of paper, it'll say active and passive flex. Uh, because, and, and wording. So you have active words and passive. A push leaves the feet down. A jump, a punch, a pull takes the feet off. Yeah. So you have to figure out which word fits for the kid. Okay? And then you can tell because if it has bad form, it's low, bobbles or breaks, then they don't have the correct words. Yeah, then it's not right yet. And then you yes. and I talked about something and it was on my list to talk to Mario, the sports psych, and we just didn't get to it, but you had mentioned it and it made me think, the these words are so important because as you're getting better and better and you get through the compulsories and then you get to optionals and maybe you're doing some hopes, you get better and better, it's equally as much about tuning out because more and more people have their their input and their voice and their coaching. They want to help you get better so that you, you could end up at a championship meet with 700 corrections for that back handspring. Exactly. And then you can't learn to compete. Right. Yeah. It's a, it's a great way to learn to compete. Now, I know Missy in 88 had sports psychologist Keith Hinchin, and what he did, he had her read a book, listen to the radio, and watch TV to tune it out. That's what a sports psychologist is for. Right. But the, only the coach, the personal coach, and maybe a staff member that's worked with them have the words to put with it. Right. They can train you how to do it, but the thing is it comes down to the – partnership of your coach and your athlete together working together and it just happened my kid for olympics she finished on beam if she hadn't a hit beam from the mental training she wouldn't have made the olympics yeah it's and so it, you work your way to the most important time in your life whether you want to get a college scholarship or what you can learn how to compete it, by doing the words it's funny because i was just watching uh the video from I think it's on Flow Gymnastics of them asking you about your relationship with Missy and how you helped her hit beam. And it was all this stuff. Yeah. It was because it was yes. it was um uh Christy on floor, right? Christy yes, Phillips was and, on floor and, and Missy, Missy was on, on beam. beam. And if she hit beam, she was going to the Olympics. She made the right. team. If she didn't hit beam, so talk about the most nerve wracking experience for for you as a coach and for Missy as the athlete, if her head game wasn't on point, if it, this wasn't rehearsed, right. th that meet, Olympic trials, was not where you guys came up with this brilliant plan to start saying words out uh, on your beam routine. No, right? we've been saying it forever because yeah. we went to Amsterdam and, I, and afterwards we could talk about it freely. And she knew when the rhythm, she didn't fall, but she knew when the rhythm and dynamics wasn't there to where something, and this is how... Uh, I work with Zuni, Suni a lot before the Worlds because to take her quality of her skills to the Olympic level. So only doing the writing and all that can come up to where you take your skills from one level to the next, to the next, to the next. Yeah, and it's and then going back to and we'll we'll keep going with the the PowerPoint, but going back to um, Paloma here showing her her ring jump, she's saying it out loud, and that's important yes. too, right? Yes. Yes. Because a lot of times the kids don't like to talk. Right. 
Well, and it's so easy if you're saying things in your head to mask a thought with what an actual word would be, right? Like I, I, yes. I think about it and I think about the skill, but those thoughts can get kind of jumbled up and it's not actually a word. It's just a feeling or a thought and you have to kind of keep right. your mind into physical, into something that you can place. It's something that's going to make the, the skill happen. Yeah. So it has to be a word to take the feet off, a word to shape in the air and know how to land so that it then the connections come naturally. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, thank you. That That's phenomenal wisdom. I hope everybody watching. And if you scroll that. it on down and show, sure. uh, you'll see that you'll have uh, maybe go down to uh, Ashley's front handspring front. Okay. Let's. Um, that's that's a good one. So and if you turn the volume up, you can hear it. Yeah. Nope. Right here. That's Jocelyn. Yeah. Right there here. it is right there. And so I've... Ashley's words were uh, a little different than this. So I helped her out. And, and she has one of the best, uh, besides Sky, she has one of the best front handspring fronts on beam. So we're trying to get it better. So on her little air floor, she'll tell you what she thinks. She just changed the words uh, last week. Right before I put her on the, before she filmed this, so I don't know. You can turn it up to here or whatever. Push. So she's telling you set and up and over. I know I can hear it. I don't think yeah, it, it push, transfers okay. to the the video. So she mountain climbs in, and push set, and up and over. And before it wasn't la it wasn't landing right there in the middle. It was landing too far forward. So she's very good with her words. And again, it's very, very important. We have a better technique by pushing on our hands and setting. So she's got a kick, push, set. Yep. And then it, it rotates up. So, and then you can see where that could turn into, uh, she could do a front pike layout, full, whatever. So, I mean, it could move forward, but she chose to do the yep. tuck. So, so that's how you want all your skills then it does and then Jocelyn has this good um so this is just for I, her front handspring and does she show it yes here? this Words is for her front handspring front, hand spring front. she's going to okay. show it and she'll tell you right here what she says and then I know we had talked about this a while back but as it goes it's going to evolve and so what works today tomorrow this this season may not work next season so having that um list it never erases it just moves forward to the next revision of something right exactly exactly well in our develop our developmental and, and national team have set the pace for what the kids have to throw so sky has set that a front hand spring front uh connor and Jocelyn and a bunch of the kids have the two foot layout. So in the side aerial lay lay and SUNY. So it's kind of got a little path for whichever way they want to go. And so to get it the cleanest, you have to break it down and know it has to have great form. Yeah. So if you scroll on down, you might see Jocelyn do her switch leg front and front handspring front, getting ready to put it on beam. See, I think it's was, after this. That's, this is the last one that I've got on this PowerPoint was this one. Okay. Uh, no, this is the two foot layout. Now this is SUNY yeah. and she says it very well. She tells you exactly and she does th the words for the step out. Then she does the words for the back handspring two foot. Then she does the layout. Then she talks you through the whole thing to do her flight. And she's working layout fulls also. And she, uh, you can tell the kids that mentally have that. Now, yeah. I don't know if yours stopped. Mine was stopping. Yours was freezing. But Mine? Did yours No, go? I think, and everybody said it seems to be playing pretty smooth. So I think okay. it's just a little it's choppy just between, mine that's not, between you okay. and I. Yeah. Um, very, very important because that back, back handspring that you learned in the backyard will come back to haunt you if you don't uh, jump it like a two foot and square it up. The square is, and if you watch Simone on some vid videos on YouTube, you'll see. The squareness is the most important for all the tumbling. Yeah. So uh, overturning out, over lunging doesn't help. So, but you can do all this by doing back walk over squeeze, 
handstand block squeeze. So that's in some of the other PowerPoint that's here. So yeah, this is great. I mean, this is so much great information. I know we we skipped through. Let me just jump through. This looks like it's a lot of the handstand. The walking. handstand walking. Yeah. yeah. Our best tumblers can walk forward, back, and side. In one year, Nastia uh, missed something at championships, and she pirouetted around so she could stand up on her feet. So That's Im an impressive this, save. Yes, very impressive. And this is a leg tightening thing that we do. So as you put the orange band on, and you do it on your back, sitting up, and then because you should have tight, tight legs. Yeah. So now it's just separating. And so she pulses yeah. out. So it's just pressing out. And before the 96 Olympics, because we had half the kids that tumbled a lot, half that didn't. And this is how we got the muscle definition so that it looked like they did a million double layouts and full in, but they didn't. Right. They had the muscle group developed. So you do it well turned out, fifth, fifth. Start with a 10 count. And when you can get to a 50 count, and you'll see the cube is in there because if they only out, you'll get the de development. If they go in and out, it doesn't yeah. work. So, and in college, asked me after that, what, what was that exercise we did when we looked so good? We're looking good, it was right. for the muscle development that you already need for tumbling. So, yeah. And, so, and I anyway, think you too, I mean, not underestimating how important developing that muscle definition and making sure that you're like your legs look a lot straighter when you develop the definition in your quad. Definitely. Look straight. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It helps to tighten up the whole leg and you can use the sliders. And again, like you said, pushing off the wall and this is where she is doing knee extension. She puts the tubing on with the chair. So there's a lot they can do at home. Yeah. And so she pushes and tightens it and then she gets on the floor and pushes off of it, off the sliders. You can, you can use paper plates, whatever you got. What she? Oh, she's tying you know, it, looping it together so it's on she's, both of her feet. Yeah. Okay. It's on both feet at first because our knee extensions are too slow. Yeah. Our feet point is too slow. So she sits there, tightens the band, and then locks her knees as she snaps it. Got it. And normally we jump back on a mat. Yep. After the China Olympics, we added that in because our, our legs were not tight enough on back handsprings. So... We, but you can't jump back maybe on a couch. Couch but or this your way, bed or something. And she we puts could, us, they could, yeah. I've, I've been very impressed with how creative in watching my kids and just Instagram and everything else. I mean, the, the creativity has come out in a big way. I mean, these kids oh, these yeah. athletes it's want good. to keep yeah. training. Um, I've got... I've, and then she can put the sliders on and, and shove the sliders forward, just like we kicked a handstand. Oh, this is But you, you have to have the tight knees. Now, this is developing for a prance. Yeah. And so it's a ball of foot snap, ball the foot down, hitting an eight-inch mat or whatever. And you got to do it slow and then fast. And this is something that we try to do prances because it leads to hurdles because of the shin. Yeah. But it turns into marching so much of the yeah. time. So this is a drill to get a, a true prance that is beautiful and light, and it's working the feet and shins. So, I was going to say one thing nah. that we were uh, really focused on before, um, you know, we stopped going to gym mid-March. So it was right before state and regionals. We were trying to fix these flexed feet right before a switch leap takeoff. But they're kind of put in, you know. Yes, exactly. Like yeah. Up, and so it's kind of this flexed ball push off. And so I'm, I'm looking at this going, this is something that while we're all out, maybe that's something we're practicing to get, um, get our feet a little bit more pointed in takeoffs. Yes, exactly. And then they need to go slow and snapping and holding and then fast. And then, uh, she's going to do the, the prancing beam, yeah. across the beam. We do it slowly and then do it fast. And if you watch her, she'll snap the shin and kick it forward so it's not lifting the knee it's ball the foot snap yeah. ball the foot down and then she starts to prance and then it makes it so uh we've tried forever to put it in a warm-up but it always turns in the knees right. up instead kind of so it's best together. to do it on beam and learn how to prance yeah now she kicks the cube so that you can see 
It could be a little ball. It could be anything yep. because the action of the snap of the foot is like kicking the cube. Yep. And, you know, we do leaps with that too. So well, I was Whoops. thinking we do so much work on, uh, on moving the shin forward on vault because you start yes. running just with your knees and the shins travel the wrong Fins way. drag behind. They go yes, backwards. Exactly. And then you're you're kind of always trying to catch up to yourself because you're only working with your knees. But if you can get that ankle and shin rotating, you know, I think about that, the drill that you have everybody do where you hold your hand out and they have to bring their shin up to you for backflip to get them yes, to exactly. that the shin. And it just looks like another variation of that. But rotating your shins like that can be, is so important. Yeah, and Dan it. Baker did a vaulting drill with the hands on the wall and he had them pull the knee up and then place the shin against the wall. So it's yeah. a really a version of the prance. Yeah. So not Which underestimating how important our shins are kind of breaking down yes. every body part and what it means. I know that's something that I've talked on, on here and then in our zoom workouts as well about taking this time to be better studies of gymnastics. Exactly. Yes. That you actually have to really listen. You had said something that I I'd, I'd love to touch on was um, how much more important it is to be listening now, to be really trying to mindfully hear what a coach is trying to say, or because now it's exactly. all kind of very distant. It's either these things or it's on Zoom workouts. And so the idea of listening is so much more important. Yeah, because I did a couple of Zooms and the I had some level three and fours get a two foot back handspring, a nice back limber. I mean, they did great. Yeah. But I, I think that because they're in the house and whatever, and they don't get much space, you can do so much more that's going to benefit them in the long run. Yeah. What, let's see if she can prance now. Let's see. I this, think she has it now. Oh, here's faster prancing. I think this, yep. Yeah, I think this is the normal. Yeah, of course, it looks choppy to me. So It's it's playing smooth on our end, but it de it's not – high knees it's not high knees not high knees it's feet and shins yeah. yes and i i know and uh vaulting tumble track made me these panel mats one one panel high to hurdle over to find the shins yeah. because the hurdle is huge to find those shins moving forward for vaulting yeah that that's fantastic and then this is your handstand working let's just watch yeah they the just knees. uh the biggest thing is being able to walk and step down on one foot yeah. with very square hips so that they get rid of that buckling of the knee lunging coming out for tumbling. So it's supposed to be straight and tight. And the judgment call of when they can step down before they bobble and break. So they may take one step, two steps, whatever, and then eventually they want to take steps walking yeah. all the way down and back and, and pirouetting. So, and then we do one arm, the side cartwheel holding with flat hips. So everything that simulates the middle part of back walkover, front walkovers, and uh, cartwheels. So there, you can do a lot. Um, and you had just mentioned something that I know we've started to implement a lot more is the straight leg T position or the straight leg lever because you... Like that to me activates the hamstring so much more than a bent leg yes. T position or a bent leg lunge. You lose it well, as soon as you bend. What happened is is when they bend their leg, it drops their hip. Yeah. So then they're not square anymore. So it's it's got to be straight and then the weight on the back foot. So you come up on one foot, then you start placing the foot behind you. And then that brings us into doing the handstand step down flipping and backhand springing. So, so you get the tumbling. Yeah. And this is, oh, blocking. So there, she's. Yeah, so then the middle part of pushing it like front and the back handspring, there should be a push phase so they don't bend their arms. So, so if they can block and push down and get their head in and you do it with a baby split, a bigger split, whatever split they use in their comp, they may be splitting bigger when they're doing some of the J.O. stuff. Yeah. Or we do everything tight and square because it's all about the tumbling. So. And I was going to say, starting to add this, this uh, kind of blocking on the beam seems to be a progression of getting into um, front handspring fronts and developing flight. Because if you don't have yes. flight off of your hands, it just becomes a front walkover. 
right? So you, yes, exactly, yeah. exactly. And that's what's getting uh, a lot of our front handspring fronts because instead of doing snow angel out to the side, they push and they set over their head. So it comes up like a beams on the ceiling and that arm action is huge. Um, one question we just got was about um, bending your, your base leg, um, unsquaring your hips and how that, like how to either look for that or how that happens and what we can do to kind of be focused on it. Well, I do everything straight leg first. Yeah. A lunge is a finish, but like uh, Simone, everybody started with two foot layout, two foot back handspring. And then once they decide what they want to do, it's okay to lunge. But to lunge just because you want to open your hips, it unsquares you and I can blow on you and you fall off. Yeah. So that it's got to be to where you're tight and square. And then you learn to lunge tight and square, not open hip, drop hip, turn it out to the side. Okay. Uh, there's some kids that do a better flight than anybody else, but then they lunge. So they do a three tenth bobble yeah. or leg lift. So, and I, I think that, um, I mean, just kind of thinking of it anatomically is if you, if you're bending that leg and you're f got flexion in your quad, then you've got a, yeah. uh, your hamstrings a lot looser than it would be if it's locked out knees back. Then you've got kind of tension yes. on both muscles. Um, I know exactly. when I'm, if I'm holding a, a locked leg and I'm really focused on my knee, I feel tension in my hamstring a lot more than the minute I bend my knee. I feel it all go to my quad, but the hamstring's gone. It's gone. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like there's a time and place for any of them, but the bottom line is trying to do any beam complex or any of the skills on anything where there is totally no extra movement whatsoever. Yeah. And then the discipline of training their brain to make it discipline that they can do a whole pass, a half a pass, whatever it is, and not have to start over because they did a bobble or break or whatever, because you can train your brain while it's happening now. So, yeah. Definitely. Um, let's see. Was there anything else on here that we wanted to go over? I really uh, appreciate the all the, here's the slider stuff. This yeah. is, this is the kick of the, for handsprings round off in aerials, just kicking and driving the sliders back to where the, you kick and go aggressive. Yeah. People don't do enough leg drives for the leaps and for the tumbling until they're all of a sudden want to do an aerial. Mm -hmm. Well, you should already have it for a round off and you should already have it, you know, so it should lead up to the static holding of the cartwheels. And that's Ella Kate does that good on this uh, PowerPoint here. She does the good cartwheels and stuff. So, um, yeah. It, Let's see if we've got, so, um, Oh, Malia, th these, these videos yeah, she right here pushes up in a bridge to shape. Yeah. And it increases your shoulder flex also if you push up in the bridge. So we don't do that many bridges, but enough bridges that you can show the middle part of front and back walkovers. So she pushes up, and then she lifts one leg, and then you can do that up against the wall so you can get your armpits to the wall. Yeah. So we have some of them where they're up against the wall, pressing in. The other day I told you there was a level uh, four, four, I think, and she ended up improving her, her arm, her back limbers and back walkovers and uh, her back, back and screwing that up against the wall. Yeah. And then this one was a, uh, that you had mentioned as well was a good one going down and back up on yeah. the leg. Well, this is huge. If you can't do this, it's the weight on your foot to go into your back walkovers yep. and then the weight up on the front walkover. Because if you can't stand there and go like that, that means you're already probably trashing your back handsprings because that means you're head and shoulders. You don't want to do a straight leg bridge. It's a bridge with the hips forward. So she has total control. Yeah. Okay. Then we can say, push off your got, feet. She's got a lot of control because I, I usually will look at a drill like this and, and watch them crash onto their hands a little too much. And there's very little. Exactly. Jumping. And she places. And comes yeah. up, did a very nice job. And she doesn't have anything else in her house but that. So uh, that's why I put her on there because she did so nice with that. It was excellent. And that's, I mean, if you're building, I'm assuming you've got, like she starts in this passe position um, because once you've now extended your leg out in front of you like a back walkover, you've uh, elongated well, the radius. Well, that's usually when they turn their foot in. And now it's not square. And that's where you get 
bad front handsprings. Yeah. It's uh, the support leg, like the stand up, sit down we did at the beginning. Now she has to push her hip forward and stand up on that leg without that passe leg falling. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I like that one a lot. And then you take that eventually from from the passe and then try and start straightening out the leg more. Yeah, and what I did the other day on one of the zooms is on a mat. This kid ha happened to have a little purple mat that was about the height of a yeah. chair. And then I, the rest of them I had to do in a chair. So they put the foot on the chair or where that a mat and they go back bend and when they get to split. So they learn to move their hips forward for the front walkovers and the front handsprings. So just by doing this drill, bent leg and then straight and slide it in, a, you know, you can stand next to the couch, yep. march back and then slide to split. So it teaches them to how to activate the hips so that we don't have. And so this is Ella Kate doing the back bending up. And she, her beam has come a tenfold, yeah. man. It's really getting good. So... And we were looking, I think, before we had talked about how the first one had a little bit of bobble from that passe right, position. Exactly. She dropped a little bit. This is maybe the next step to look for is that we're a right. little bit stronger. Right. So it doesn't yeah. drop at all. Exactly. Now, arm position for you, she's got them turned in a little bit. I, mean, I would have them straight. straight. I would have them straight, and then you can do a combination of a handstand and then a... a wherever you can get your shoulders square. Yeah. Um, and then the TikTok is huge. So pushing up in a bridge and TikToking back and forth. And again, they have to ha do the bridge up against the wall to keep the armpits. Cause if the armpits stay over the wrist, you'll never miss a front walkover. Yeah, I, if, if, if that angle changes, that's when the fear comes in and I know so, that there's been a ton of TikToking at home, but I don't think it's I don't think it's this TikTok. That's uh, no. Mm -mm. But let's see what this one is. So her goal is flat armpits, and she just touches and taps her foot, and then brings it back up. So she tries to get her armpits flat, more like that, and tap. So where she barely touches, so she learns how to keep the weight on the feet. Yeah. The, the TikTok keeps the weight on the hands. So you have to have the twofold to know when it shifts to the hands and shifts to the feet. Yeah, and it's, so those are the two most important for tumbling. She's got a lot of beam. her weight staying between the your your core for the most part, right? Between the hips and the shoulders, right, exactly. Versus yeah. dumping to the hands and dumping to the feet that become because this looks yeah. so smooth. But I feel like if we drop to our extremities, to our hands or to our feet too fast, we lose that smoothness and that control. Well, and it creates high fear. And sometimes they don't even know why they're afraid. Right. But that's if they can't do those two drills, it, it creates high fear. Yeah. Because then they have no control. So, and, I, and they have every right to be afraid. I'm, I'm thinking these drills, and you got to work with this athlete a lot but i will always go replay kyla ross's front aerial yes um, yes because it it rotates from her center of gravity so much yes she blocks her shoulders jumping. out yeah she blocks her shoulders and kicks more like a front layout yeah that's what makes our aerials better and and with straighter legs when you can arch the upper back twice beginning and, and end. at the end yeah yeah. And for, because I've got some kids that um, struggle on the, especially the lower back flexibility, or there's a lot of, of pinching and pain there. What are some suggestions that you have to develop maybe well, some more of these skills or at least the tolerance? Well, they can even stand next to the wall and just like we arch back over a beam. Yeah. They can just reach back and tap the wall with their hands. So they're only working their upper body. Because you want to work your Achilles, your hip flexor, and the upper body. And even if you got at a drugstore one of those little elastic things to go around their back, it uh -huh. should not be in their back. They, yeah. it, they should, they could tighten it up and so that they're not using their back at all. Because it has nothing to do with the back. If it is, then they're doing it wrong. Yeah. So we're, we're focusing in the shoulders and the lats that kind of come back here, yes. right? Trying to get the flexibility to open yep. up more from that area, which is a safer position to be at than putting a ton of pressure on the lower back and having that in a really yes. compressed and position. And like the kid that did back bending up, she pushed her hip 
forward right. and kept her heel down. So she's using the Achilles and the hip flexor and her shoulders versus yeah, the back. We can go back to that one because I, I agree. So you I, can I see think... Ella Kate push her hip yeah. forward. So she's using her Achilles at the bottom and then, and she taps and comes back up. Yep. I think that. So it shouldn't and, be, yeah, it shouldn't be in the back. And moderating it, like you said, you start yeah, on a wall. You don't and you do that many. Tolerance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you can, I'm sure you can replicate this multiple times against a wall versus you're going to start versus feeling the wall, it yeah. in your lower back after five or six of these, but maybe you can do 20 against the wall and just work on the opening just the upper flexibility. Back. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Um, that's our TikTok from the bridge. This is, oh. Yeah. Oh, this is Connor doing the square yeah. and we did down hers. The square. Squareness is huge pushing off to square the handstand. Yeah. Because that first back handspring step out should have square hips. Boy, I like this one a lot. We do it up, up to mats where they'll go back, walk yeah. over back handspring up to a mat. But this is great. And then on one of Josh's on my website, she does uh, the hands like you would a round off against the wall. Yeah. For Uchinko. She does that. Now, this is great because this is elegant. Kate doing the side cartwheels. She did them against the wall and clear across with side cartwheel trying to snap her head to look in the direction she's going. Yeah. And I like this. I mean, our boys gymnastics code, we learned side cartwheels first. And this was like our first skill in yes. the code. Um, uh, and the, the girls code doesn't important. utilize it very much. I've seen you use it a lot, but. Yeah, it's an important skill. And and Moss Watnabi, he related everything to the cartwheels, yeah. sideways and square. And so, and doing near hand and far hand in the cartwheel is huge. And you, you so, have a lot harder time with this technique, learning this technique or, or working it, jumping onto your hands. Like we have so many vaulters yeah. that just literally half into their vault. You yeah. A lot and it's not supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then this, she leaves leads up and it, and then she does it square and then the one arm second hand which is a vault drill yep. and then she does a side aerial all the way across so it shows how it leads up with three in a row of everything and just so we always do three in a row you, i was going to say using these videos and some things that we've talked about before so that everybody else can use it is you always work from one end of the beam to the other end of the beam always yes uh-huh not putting you know your favorite thing just in the middle Extra stuff in right. there. Yeah. I want to do a lot of extra stuff because that carries over to bobble and breaking yep. and no combination. Well, and, and so I'll, everything's about combining. I'll pick out the one with fear on beam when I say, okay, you got three across the beam and it's one cartwheel walk backwards, one cartwheel walk. Yeah. Backwards, oh one. yeah. Don't want to do that. Yeah. That's so now she does one snaps her head. And you'll see the better, best aerials, they snap the head. And it squares her hips and shoulders. And this is a big problem in Elite where the side flip and the side aerial look like the same skill. Yeah. So, and one thing I noticed, because I know we try and do this a lot at the gym, and it's a struggle for a lot of the kids to commit to the second arm. Almost everybody yeah, the gets second the arm. first arm. Yeah. But they... But they struggle on the second arm and, and one thing i noticed she's doing really well which is what i try and go for is follow the first arm through and just make the decision at the very last moment to snap your head and not put the hand down yeah yeah well i tell you when she does a drill i think it's on the powerpoint against the wall i'm not sure if it's on this or not but the side cart will show, show you how to hold one hand and then work your way up to be able to do the second hand. Oh, you so, can hold it too. I remember and then now this before. Let's see. This is Lily. Yeah, Lily doing the nice square for her flight. Her flight's gotten really good. And the handstand step down. So she steps away. There's two versions. She's got to step away to do the step out. If you've pulled your uh, legs too close to your hands, it'll destroy your flight. So we always do the Connor. I call it the Connor because Connor has our best two foot layout. Yeah. So Lily's working the layout full too. So we should have about five or six layout fulls this year, which I'm excited about. Be yeah. Because that's, um, 
G, what's the what's the value of a layout full? It's a G. It's a G. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, I Sierra had just asked if we have any good uh, bar drills, and I know this is the joke at every developmental camp is that you are phenomenal on bars. They just don't put you on bars very often. But they just don't put me on bars. <laughs> yeah, I have the whole in bar circuit that I really. So any suggestions me, for things that we can that, that we should be practicing at home for bars? Yeah, the the handstand is the most important, yeah. and being able to shift and hold one hand, and not to use your fingers. So if you have a low rail or a low beam, put the heel of the hand on, and and don't do the fingers because the fingers curling make it just circle. Yeah, and the heel of the hand. So if you could find the heel of the hand, you can because there's two one arms per every half pirouette yeah. so you've got to post and, and push on it so you can do a lot of uh nice drills with the handstands and the pirouettes and even do quarters instead of halves yep and i know and this is oh go ahead go ahead that's okay go ahead i was gonna say to in in my mind and i always learned parallel bars right so i i had a different way of learning balance from um, from a handstand position, but to me, the fingertips are always the break. That's always what kind of right. controls and stops you. But the post is comes from the palm of your hand. So working, yes, uh -huh. I, I, working handstands where you can actually pick the same way we would do a a, a turn, where you don't want to turn with your toes curled down. You want to turn right, and try exactly. and pick your toes up, right? Because that's a yeah, and you have to, exactly. And so you need to have that. And so, uh, like I said before, if the, they have a low ceiling, they could use a low rail and kick up and put their feet on the ceiling and shift and lift. Yeah. I don't know what they have, but some kids uh, have done that. Right, a low enough then ceiling Jocelyn, you something outside that you can post your feet up on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Anything else? You had said you were going to say something about Jocelyn doing something for bars. Uh, this uh, her front handspring front. Oh, she ha doesn't have these skills in, but they're they're really uh, good for her. And some kids aren't doing it, and it's two tenths bonus. It, it's like um, like side aerial lay lay. Mm -hmm. The front handspring front is accelerating, so it you can get big two tenths bonus when you're doing some skills like this that you could be made for. Plus, it it makes them better on floor tumbling. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say this is, they have and the double front is not, hasn't gone away. I mean, every quad we have kids use, every year for at Worlds, we have kids using the either the Arabian double front or the handspring double front. I just saw yeah. some gauge kids doing front handspring punch double front half out uh, that they were yeah. training. Yeah. Oh, and this was. And then this is the a switch, switch leg yep. front flip. And uh, one team doing it, and it, it really is you know mine is stopping so but it you can really if you work split jump front that sets you up for doing front handspring front and switch leg front and then also on a, doing a, a switch leg up onto blocks yeah okay or doing like the switch leg mount. mount yep yeah because oh, uh, I got, doing I switch got leg Fire. up like a mount it'll make you learn how to not cheat your switch so it doesn't mean you in elite we use it as a dance d but I just train it because it makes them take all switches up because the switch leg leap is such a cheating skill. Right. Because nobody goes up. So you want yeah, to tr try to get it to where it's going to go high. And I know if you're looking just at the code, I mean, it, it asks you to get your first, your, your posting leg up to 90 degrees or higher before exactly. you switch. Exactly. That's your, most kids will only go, you slow it down and they're only at 45 degrees. So you lose all of your up. Best case. Well, you don't get out. any hip rise. The hips right. are supposed to rise through the chest. Yeah. So we, we do a lot of skipping up on the panel mats and stuff at the camps, and it really makes the leaps go up. Yeah. So that's so very nice. Straight leg skips outside. They can do that. Yes. With, with we can ankle do that. Yeah. Or with, exactly. Uh, the tubing in between their ankles to give you some resistance, but a, and, exactly. And, that to me, because I know that was it, skips and straight leg skips were always in our warm ups. But a minute and a half of that, going back to what you had said at the beginning, which is get your endurance going for a minute and a half. Yes, a minute exactly. Minute and a half straight leg skipping is going to burn your hip flexors and quads. Like that's going to be. Yeah, that's tough. exactly. 
That and you can do easy. squat explodes if, if, you know, you can do a lot of stuff, stretch yeah. jumps, long jumps, a million different kinds of uh, jumping, squatting, whatever, because uh, you want to keep in uh, cardio shape. Yeah. Yeah. The cardio shape. Any other suggestions? Because, um, I mean, I've gotten better at, because we're not in the gym as much as we were um, at getting out and, and running. Any other suggestions on... Some well, like they talked about us. in some of the PowerPoints that we had this last week, running yeah. stairs, up and down the stairs, like Lily d does it on the benches because there's no parents in there. Yeah. But if some kids have stairs at home and running the stairs can help, just make sure that you have good tennis shoes and don't uh, get shin splints. Yeah, the shin so, splints can get when yeah. you start putting a lot of miles. Yeah. I think one exactly. thing I learned in cross country was tracking your tennis shoes mileage. Like actually keeping track of how much mileage you put on a tennis shoe because you're not supposed to put a lot of mileage per shoe. So you start wearing them in too yeah. much and then you're, you're exactly. start killing you. And I think that's easier for us to do now, especially I know some of my kids are doing two, three workouts a day. You can, wow. if, if some of that's cardio running outside, you could put some miles on the shoe pretty quick. So yeah, so make sure they're good shoes Yeah. because you could always do low impact with picking the knees up and adding tubing with pulling the knees up and do a lot of uh, stuff that you can uh, do, uh, bringing the leg in and out, in and out, tucking a push-up position, running, you yeah. know. So there's a lot of ways you can build up some cardio and some endurance. Just don't let it get into your shins. Right. I was going to say. we don't want to have shin splints when you come back. <laughs> as soon as, right, as soon as they let us all back in is when we're going to have the shin splints and everything else hurting new injuries that yeah. we didn't have necessarily before. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So you got to prepare for that. So. And you had, you had mentioned because I'm always a big advocate of, um, high intensity kind of mixing yes. a slower pace recovery where you don't stop, but you pick an exercise that may be very intense, like your skips or your high knees or, or sprinting, and then you lower the intensity for 30 seconds. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because they've got to come and, and you can jump rope. You can run in place really fast. You could, it, some kids have a uh, air floor or a uh, eight inch mat. You can run around something that's softer. Yeah. And that develops your hamstrings and it develops your cardio. Yeah. So I, I usually time that a minute and a half or two minutes going one way, then another way, and it builds up the breathing, and then they take their heart rate. And then if you keep doing that cardio training when you get back in the gym, you can figure out how much recovery time they're going to have in, uh, to, between their tumbling passes to do their leaps. Because yeah. you have to figure out can they recover during the leaps and the dance part before they get to the tumbling pass again. And finding that time, I, I would think that utilizing our floor music and practicing using that as a kind of a key for high intensity, low intensity would be important oh, yeah. too. Well, and, and two, if you can do your arm routines for beam and floor yeah. and do it to music, you can do it sitting down, then you can do it standing up because it's amazing to figure out how they can, uh, like I was doing this with uh, one of the clubs, is there's five ways to train a floor routine. So if they have a space in the yard or somewhere, mm -hmm. you train um, high releve, then you train uh, head snaps, then you train big arm movement, then you train wrist movement, and then body alignment. So you do five different ways to train, and those are the five different kids across the country in the past history that had beautiful feet, Beautiful body alignment, beautiful arms and wrist and head spot. Amanda Borden probably had the best head snaps of anyone. Yeah. And everybody thought she had special whatever. No, she had beautiful head spots. And and so and then the girls also can work a lot with um, their fingers not being a claw. Oh, so yeah. So holding a, a pencil and do your beam complex. Do something to where you're not doing the claw. So. Got it. Um, I had two more questions that some of my kids had sent in for you. Um, one was one of our kids, Danya, who had asked, um, can basics lead to actual skills without being able to actually do the skill? Yes, for sure. Yes. Yeah. Definitely. And then, um, I mean, I, I think that's actually, you had said it a little bit earlier in, in our talk too, that, um, 
it actually helps us get more numbers in than doing an actual skill because you can only do so many of your tumbling pass, whatever that is, or your vault or your exactly. So, and this is where I go back to Connor. Connor and Susan do a lot of the back walk over square. They don't do a million back handspring, back handspring, two foot layout, yet she's got the best one. Yeah. You know, so she works on her feet, she works on her knees, she works on all the stuff and working those tightening of your legs and speed of your feet and blocking of your arms, all of that's what you have to have when you get back. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, oh, one other one, which I had a question over as well was just, arm positioning uh, for leaps. Um, okay, uh, it's very important. I use jumping jack arms, yep. so I do a lot of uh, just driving the arms to jumping jack, then doing the jumping jack, and then doing split jumps with jumping jack. And how you'll figure out is when you get back to the gym, those jumping jack arms, and Jocelyn breaks it down in one of the things of, of the turning and Lily has it. Uh, the jumping jack arms, because it's more athletic, so you could do dance arms, but the problem is, is they're too slow. Yeah. And so uh, uh, the best switch halves and tergite halves are done on a regular trampoline. And once they get the snap of the legs, the arms start to do jumping jack just naturally. Yep. But it's like, that's why when you're doing a complex across beam, do uh, skip arabesque, just pull the arms up and open. Pull the arms up to your chest and open. You can go skip arabesque on both sides and you're training the arms and you can do tubing. So to speed up the arms. So a lot of jumping jack and a lot of in front and then open oblique in front and open oblique so that you have a beautiful body shape. So, yeah, I was going to ask you too, um, because I noticed some oblique, some opposition in some of the videos um, with Malia, I would guess, um, I, I know you a little bit more oblique just because it's a prettier position sometimes to get the shoulders open, but kind of well, having it. Cheryl, Ham Cheryl Hamilton says it best because how the college kids present with the open chest, that's what FIG is looking for. Yeah. So if you can do it in opposition and press down, then great. But we just don't do uh, very much opposition very well. Right. But if you do it very well, pressing the shoulders down, by all means, there's not a right or wrong. That's, yeah. But you have to be definite. Well, thank you so much. This has been amazing. You're so welcome. I love getting to talk to you. Every time I get a chance to, I, I would sign up. <laughs> I would sign up every day if I could to get this much Tammy time. Um, <laughs> okay. It's it's it TammyBigsGymnastics.com, and they've got a lot more information up there as well, right? Yeah, it's free. Go to Tammy's Tips. It's all free. Yeah, so I can look up here just so you guys can see it as well. Um, it's just going under her website and you can sign up, I guess, as to get consultations with you and, and everything else as well. Right. They can sign up for more information. Yeah. But, Tammy, but if they sign up, the, there's Jocelyn and Ella K yeah. and a bunch of kids doing the drills. So I try to load as much up there well, I was as I possibly can. Yeah. And I was looking at this. I mean, you've updated this so much in the last couple of weeks with to keep everybody busy. So there's a lot of yeah. really good information up here for everybody to take a look at. Yeah, so go there, and then I, I'm trying to do the PowerPoint. I gave it to you, but for some reason, I it's too big to load up to, so I've got to figure out how to do that. Well, so. hey, anything that I can do to help, if I can if I can help with something, I'd be happy to, but I really appreciate all the time Perfect. that you took with us. Awesome. It's been amazing. Well, so. keep working hard and keep the kids working hard. We'll do. We'll be back someday soon. <laughs> we'll be back and, and we'll see you we'll see you in the gym. As soon as we can uh, get everybody back, we'll have you we'll have you out. Awesome. We'll keep working hard, girls, please. Yeah. They love you guys. Love you. I know everybody. Uh, we appreciate having you. Tammy, thank you so much. You're so welcome. Talk All to right. you later. Ciao, bye. bye. All right, guys, thanks again for tuning in. This was a ton of information. Um, if you have any questions, feel free, uh, drop a comment down below so we can uh, help answer as much as we can. Um, really appreciate everything you guys are doing. You guys are awesome. Uh, keep it up, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, peace.